And the problem with radical grace is so many of those people are on a path out of God. And be careful uh, traveling a path on your way out of God because you might succeed. So many people in the radical grace message are going to be lost. Um, you know, because they're exactly the people who have the grace of God given to them of life and righteousness, but because they're pursuing a path that excuses sin and a greasy grace, that what they're really saying is, God, uh, you didn't give me any righteousness. You're a hard man. You, you take back what you first didn't sow. And that's what they're saying in their actions. Now, I know in their mouth they're saying, oh, the grace of God. But what they're really saying when they say, oh God, your grace and your mercy is, oh God, you let me get away with sin. That's what I'm calling your grace and your mercy. But listen, God's not complicit in your sin. If all God did was have mercy on habitual sin, that's no longer mercy. That's God being complicit in your sin. You've extended uh, the definition of mercy beyond its actual uh, definition, and it's no longer mercy. I know you're saying it's mercy. A hypergrace person is saying it's grace, but really what you're saying is, God, you didn't give me uh, anything. Even though that person got born again, they received the grace of God, the life of God. They received the righteousness of God to walk righteous with, but they so didn't know God that the here they no longer know a God that gave them righteousness, but they say, oh God, you take what you first didn't give. In other words, they know God totally opposite of grace. And therefore, since they understood God out of their natural mind, even what they uh, seem to have is taken from them, even that born-again life is taken from them, and they'll go off into a godless eternity.